Okay, we've talked about BCP out and BCP in. Now let's talk about some problems that can happen with your data when you're BCPing in. You usually won't have problems BCPing out because the text file doesn't really know anything about the data. It's just going to spit out whatever you tell it to spit out. So the problems you're going to see are going to be when you when you go to take it and put it back into the database somewhere. So uh, the, the types of problems you can come across are going to be stuff like PK violations, uh, those, that's primary key. Uh, you can come across uh, just bad data, bad delimiters as well. Um, all types of things that you can come across, but those are three of your most common. So you'll have you know, some kind of PK violation, you'll have uh, bad data, or you'll have a bad delimiter. Which I suppose is kind of bad data too when you, uh, when you get right down to it. So, uh, you know, in BCP there are, there are ways to handle these errors, uh, and we're going to talk about a couple of these, and then we're going to talk about the absolute best way, because, you know, some ways are better than others. Okay, first off, we're going to start here. Let's go ahead. I've, I've messed up one of, the, one of the files. I'm going to elongate this a little bit, and I think it is BCP test 2 right here that I've actually messed up so there is some bad data in there so I'm gonna start by uh, BCP Storal DBO dot BCP test in and I'll say uh, okay so far I'll just go over the syntax with you one more time again. Uh, the name of the program is BCP, of course. And then you go with the database name, the schema name, and the table name. That's a, almost a, a fully qualified table name. And then you have to pick the direction in, and then the full path to the text file where you, that you're actually importing. And again, it's not case sensitive at all. I just like to put a big in and a big out there so that it, it, it tells me uh, which direction it's going and it's easier to pick out. So that's not the end of it yet. We still need to put our minus T. That's a trusted connection. That tells us that we're connecting to the database with Windows authentication. And this happens to be in character format, which means I need to give a field terminator in quotes and I always use a pipe symbol so I'm going to use that and that should be good enough and you can see some of the errors starting to show up there okay we're finished okay now if we go back up to the top here well, it already, we already uh, scrolled past some of it, but here's one error right here that happened somewhere between 3.17 and 3.18. Now, these errors can be kind of hard to uh, kind of hard to pinpoint. Uh, we'll we'll concentrate on this one right now, and uh, we'll go over a, a common technique that's been used for a long time, and then I'll I'll talk to you about a better technique. Um, actually, two better techniques. So first of all. We'll just hit the up arrow here and get our our uh, command back. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say minus F, which is the first line, and go 317000. And then I'm going to pick the last line, and I'm going to just start kind of cutting this down. So let's say 317500. So I'm only going to take uh, 500 rows between. 317 and 3, uh, 317 500. The reason I'm doing that is I know it's somewhere between 17. Here, let's go up here. Yeah, I know it's somewhere between 17 and 18, but I don't know exactly where. And I know I had some errors up top there, and, and we would do the same thing for those errors as well. But uh, if I went between 317 and 318, I would get the exact same error. It wouldn't really tell me anything. So if I go between 317 and 317500 and I don't get an error, then I'll start at 317501 next time and go to 318 and I'll at least be able to, to pin down which side of the of the thousand it's on. 
So once I do this, okay, and you can see here right away that I had 500 rows copied, and there's my line, and here is my invalid character for cast specification. So I've got an invalid character somewhere, but it still doesn't really tell me where, but I know that it's somewhere in the first 500 rows. So that narrows that down. I will keep this. Now, the thing that's holding me up now, I mean, I could do this all day long, but the thing that's holding me up now is this 1,000 rows sent to SQL Server right here. You can see that it's in 1,000 row batches. And what I need to do is I need to narrow my batches down. So I'm going to say minus B, which is a batch size, and I'm going to say 10. So this is, it tells it that it's going to, it tells it to give uh, 10 row batches instead. So instead of 1,000 row, 1, rows sent to SQL, you're going to see 10 rows sent to SQL. And that's going to really help us narrow down where this error is. So if I go ahead and run this, ah, there we go. It's already there. So it, it's somewhere bet between 300 and 310. Well, that's, that's actually pretty handy, isn't it? So... Uh, with that in mind, the next easiest way to do that is you can come here and say batch 1. You know, if you're going to be that way. And let's go ahead and start at... three seventeen five hundred, And let's end... Or, I'm sorry, not 500. 300 let's go 310 and batches of 1 okay so you see here's my batch 1 right there and right there one row sent total of one row starting copy so at, and there's row 2 and row 3 and row 4 and row 5 and row 6 and row 7 so it was clearly at row 317, uh, 317, 501, right? Or 301, that's right. 317, 301 is my bad row. So, in order to, uh, in order to get past this, classically you would use the first and last batch terminators. And, and I realize this is kind of a cumbersome way to do this, but I'm doing this just to, uh, just to really show you how, how useful first and last can be because you can use first and last for all kinds of things for limiting your data, for uh, for getting past errors, for jumping past a certain amount of data um, if you need to recover from something, if you need to do things in smaller batches you can do it you can do it uh, with the first and last and just kinda creep through your text file one one step at a time you can take a you can you know take a very very large text file that has say you know, 300 million rows in it, and you can cut it up into batches of, say, 10 million if you needed to, and you can do that just by crawling through with first and last. And it'll take you a while, but if you're if you're really short on log space, then that's that's definitely the way to do it. So, uh, so I've got here, I've, I've got my error at 301, and that's easy enough. And the way I would do this is I would, st I would take it from from line 1 to 317.300 and then from 317.302 to the end and you don't really have to specify a batch and for the last one you don't have to specify a last you could just say you know from the first now I believe BCP will default to uh, to 10 errors before it actually errors out the command. So if you get more than 10 errors, uh, then it's gonna it's gonna error out the command, and you're gonna and the whole thing's gonna fail. But otherwise, it's just gonna keep on going and skip those rows. There is a better way to find out at least how many errors you have and what uh, and what the errors are, what the nature of the errors is. If you use the minus e switch that's obviously going to create an error file and then point that to a file uh, backslash b 
tcperrors.txt. Now if I do this, let's make sure I don't have anything else. Okay, good. I'm going to see these errors come across here. We'll just wait for that. There's the other one, and good. We got all that. And here's my bcperrors.txt. And if you look at it here, there you've got all of the rows that blew up. And you see here the last row was the one that we calculated with the batch file 317301. That's the one we were able to pinpoint right there. But this is so much easier because it tells you the row number, it tells you which column, and it tells you what's wrong with it. So this is right here, invalid character cast. So I look here at uh, 317301 is the first column. The second column is 2007 zero r 28 okay so I can tell that's supposed to be a month by the other by the other columns by the other by that same column in the other rows so zero r clearly isn't a month and it's clearly looking at the position of the of the r on the keyboard it was supposed to either probably be a four or a five but it's impossible to tell what it's supposed to be so you this is one of those errors that you're gonna have to kick back to uh, the business unit because you know you can't take a chance on on entering the wrong data you don't know if that's supposed to be a four or a five so there's nothing really physically you can do about it but look at these other guys here this is invalid date format that's fine and you've got 2080226 and 2080321 207 208 207 207 it's pretty clear here that that's a year and that somebody just went too fast and, and didn't hit both zeros. So that's probably something that you could fix on your own. Now the problem, of course, that you have here is how do you fix it? How do you get this thing fixed on your own? Because you certainly can't re-import this file because it's got all of this uh, error information in here. And every single line it's got this error information. That's really nothing you can do anything with. So this is really kind of only a diagnostic tool. There's nothing you can do with this other than maybe send it back to a BA and say, hey, fix this data and send it to me again. If you're getting an export, if you're getting it from a third party, like a, like a third party vendor, like maybe you're getting a bank feed from somewhere, then uh, you, know, you, could, you, know, you could kick this error back to them and say, you know, these are the errors that were in your data and uh, you know you need to fix these errors and then send me some clean data that's that's very common in these types of scenarios so uh, but if you have to fix it yourself what you're gonna need to do logically because you could have you know a lot more errors than this I mean even if you've got one error you can't really import this into into a file I mean what you would have to do is you would have to uh, you'd have to fix this file you would have to dump everything in here say if this last error were the only thing I had you would have to kill absolutely everything else in here like that take these guys out and add your pipes to it oops that's not a pipe is it and add your pipe to it come over here and let's say that you found out this was really supposed to be a four got that Add your pipe and maybe add your pipe here too there you go so with that one row you could either add that one row back to the original file and re-import the entire file or just BCP in this this one file I mean if you've got you know 500 million rows I don't think you're gonna re-import the entire batch just for this one for this one text file but this is still kind of cumbersome this still isn't really any way at all to to do something like this so if you're gonna get something like this I suggest you use something like SIS or another ETL type tool that you can spit the errors out to either a delimited text file or you can or even better yet you can spit them out to a table because when you spit these rows out to a table it's gonna it's gonna keep the rows for you and you'll be able to fix the data and then you can just do a straight insert from that into the database or you can have SIS fix it automatically and reinsert it into the data flow I'm uh, I'm actually about to to do a screencast on that very thing so 
you know, I'll, I'll try to link it back to this one when I get there. But, you know, when it, when it comes to, to fixing these files, you know, there's really nothing else you can do in BCP to, to fix these other than either manually do it like this. And even for the, for the small number of files we ha for the small number of errors we had in this file, you could still do it by hand, but I really wouldn't recommend it. It's just not a good idea. Um, you know, it, it's far best for almost any errors at all to either kick it back to the BA, to the, to the data source, and have the, and have the errors fixed at the source and then get a new feed, or to do it in an ETL tool and do it right. Um, I really don't recommend creating your own text files like this. It's, it's way too error prone, and, and you're going to have to do a lot of checking to make sure that you get it right. So, you know, those are the basics of, uh, of error handling and BCP. And, you know, there's, you know, you can use these, com these techniques in combination, uh, you know, especially if you, if you spit it out to an error file. If I BCP something and I get this kind of, this kind of data problem, you know, I'll spit it out to an error file just to see the nature of the data, of, of the data corruption. Uh, and once I see the nature of it, then that'll help me decide exactly what needs to be done. If every single one of these things had a zero R in it, then, you know, I would kick it back to the BA. If there was a problem with the day, where the day itself, instead of 28 maybe the day was supposed to be 12 but they accidentally typed 122 or 112 well you can't tell if that's supposed to be 12 or 11 you can't tell where the mistake is and it's not going to import into the database so you have to kick it back to the BAs and say I have no idea where this you know where this is supposed to be so uh, in that case there's nothing really you can do but in the case of like a bad year or something like that, then yeah, you could pretty easily uh, fit that through SIS and, and code a solution for it, and then anything that doesn't fit into that into that paradigm, you can spit out to a table, and maybe you'll catch 50% of them, maybe you'll catch 90% of them. You know, it's it, it really it's it really just based on the data, right? So anyway, that's how you how you solve some of the import errors in BCP.